You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on the South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Park-packed Khalistani ultras looking to spread terror in India. Afghan women losing basic rights under Taliban rule. And Southeast Asia's news outlet exposes Pakistan's terrorism. Pakistan is misusing all its state mercenaries to provoke anti-India sentiments. To disrupt peace and harmony in the largest democracy of the world, the notorious South Asian nation is attempting to promote separatism and terrorism in its Punjab state. The recent blast in accord once again exposed the Khalistan ISI unholy alliance. We have a report. Nearly two decades after the comprehensive defeat of terrorism in Punjab, the pro-Khalistani elements supported by Pakistan are trying to revive militancy in the state. The recent deadly blast in Ludhiana District Court Complex in Punjab was the outcome of such malicious intent. The probe agencies have found the involvement of Khalistani terror outfits and Pakistan's ISI behind the explosion, which killed one person and injured several others. Jaswinder Singh Multani, a top member of Band 6 for Justice, has been detained in Germany for allegedly being the main conspirator of the explosion. He recently showed up on security agency's radar for arranging and sending weapons consignments comprising explosives, hand grenades and pistols from across the border with the help of Pakistan-based operatives. The Sikh for Justice radical was conspiring to bring in more explosives from Pakistan in India through the international boundary and was also planning to carry out similar blasts in other parts of the country. The Khalistani groups supported by Pakistan lack a sense of geography as well as history. If their objective was to create an independent Khalistan, then major portion of Pakistan, Punjab province would also be included in the same. However, they try to portray the map of the so-called Khalistan, which includes parts of Indian Punjab only. Pro-Khalistan sympathizers believe that one day their time will come and the ISI and Pakistani establishment are trying their best to make that happen. They are developing a network of sympathizers for undertaking targeted killings in Punjab. Just a few days ago, the chief of Khalistani terrorist organization Six for Justice, Gur Parwan Singh Pannu, wrote to Pakistan PM Imran Khan seeking his intervention in the referendum and fall of Delhi. The letter was written on December 16, 2021, the 50th year anniversary of the formation of Bangladesh after the 1971 war, which led to Pakistan's humiliating defeat. Pannu had written to Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan to support Six for Justice to free Punjab and form Khalistan. Interestingly, Khalistani organizations are asking for support from Pakistan, where Sikhs, who are in the minority, often face atrocities at the hands of the majority population. What is even more interesting is that when these organizations release the proposed map of Khalistan, they conveniently skip adding parts of Punjab that are in Pakistan where many major shrines of the Sikh religion are located. It is very clear that this is a map which has actually been drawn by the Pakistan ISI and given to the Khalistanis. So we should not take much heed of that, their, their propaganda and should understand what is the underlying import of the same. If we look at the Khalistan movement, we wonder where the rationale is. Other than a motive of taking revenge, there is really no description anywhere of what kind of state Khalistan would be. There is only Pakistan, 
which has supported the movement since the very start. It is the need for revenge in Pakistani eyes for the 1971 war, which tore off what was then East Pakistan to turn it into Bangladesh, an independent country. The Islamic Republic is now cheering the Khalistan dream after the failed Kashmir project. Let's shift the focus to India's Jammu and Kashmir, which has been continuously suffering due to Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. There are frequent infiltration attempts by terrorists from Pakistani side into Kashmir Valley with an aim to create fear psychosis among the people. However, the Indian security forces successfully managed to foil all devious agendas of Pakistan. Have a look. Rapid development and peace in Jammu and Kashmir has irritated Pakistan. It is now adopting vicious tactics to create instability and chaos in the Union territory by sponsoring terror groups. There have been frequent infiltration from across the border, but the Indian government has given free hand to its security forces to eliminate the infiltrators. The Indian security forces have successfully managed to bust various terror hideouts in Kashmir Valley and neutralized several terrorists. Recently, two terrorists belonging to lashkar e taiba outfit were killed in Shopian district. One of the terrorists involved in grenade firing and killing of civilians. Earlier, a terrorist belonging to an unknown outfit was also neutralized by the security forces in Anantnag district. In the evening, Shopian police got the alarm that the Shopian was in the middle of the day. lashkar e taiba two terrorists were killed. The army, police, CRP were killed. After the cordon, the cordon was killed by the military and the military. फिर भी ऑपरेशन को हमने रोक दिए और सिविलियन के ब्रिकेट के आज मॉर्निंग फिर से इनकाउंटर रिजीम हुआ जिसमें लश्कर तवा का दोनों टेरिस्ट मारा गया कश्मीर वैली हैज बीन विटनेसिंग अ सीरीज ऑफ टेररिस्ट अटैक इन द पास्ट कपल ऑफ मंथ्स देयर वाज अ डेस्परेट अटेम्प्ट बाय पाकिस्तान टू क्रिएट एन एटमॉस्फेयर ऑफ फियर एंड टेरर अमंग द पीपल दैट वुड हिंडर द इकॉनमी एंड प्रोग्रेस इन द स्टेट Experts believe that Pakistan is intentionally pushing terrorists into Kashmir Valley with an aim to keep the Kashmir on the boil. See, Pakistan wants to keep the Kashmir in the limelight, in the international arena and also within its own country. Now, I'll take up the reason for it to keep it in the limelight, which is firstly its own country, because right from 47 onwards, they have been saying Whosoever ruled, whether it was Jan uh, Yaya Khan or it was a civilian government, whosoever became the ruler over there, they always said that Kashmir banega Pakistan and we will take over Kashmir. If it does not come to us legally, we will take it by force. And this is what they have been feeding their population. Many Pakistan based terror outfits are operating in Kashmir Valley. They include Hezbollah Mujahideen, Harkate Ul Mujahideen, Lashkar e Taiba, and Jaish e Mohammed. According to the sources, Jaish e Mohammed has emerged as one of the most active recruiters in the Kashmir Valley. It has inducted 82 terrorists in the first seven months of 2021. Security forces have killed a total of 134 terrorists in various counter terrorism operations this year. Despite remaining in the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force, Pakistan continues to nurture and finance dreaded terrorists in its territory. The terrorism is on its last legs and in Kashmir Valley, it will be seen that by the dawn of 2022, the entire terrorism in Kashmir Valley will be wiped out, the militants will be wiped out, including their underground and overground workers who are acting as their liaison and support base. They will also be under arrest or um, wiped out. And this we have seen very evidently from the Hyderpura incident recently, wherein there was the harboring of this uh, Pakistani terrorist by some people. And when they were asked, they were taken there to that hideout, the terrorists killed both of them together before being eliminated by the security forces. Although the Indian security forces are quite vigilant enough, yet India has to be careful as more terrorists could make their way into the valley. They could try to infiltrate from Afghanistan as Al-Qaeda has already made its way into the country. They fought alongside the Taliban in Afghanistan against the Western forces. 
The outfit recently changed the name of its magazine, which earlier called as Nawai, that is Afghan Jihad or the Voice of Afghan Jihad. Now they call it Nawai Ghazwat Ul Hind or the Voice of Conquest of India. The new name reflects their new intention. The alert Indian security forces are ready to counter Pakistan's malicious attempts to destabilize India by using terrorism as its tool. Pakistan has gained the international reputation of being the world's foremost exporter of terrorism. With the government's knowledge and the military's support, terrorist organizations like lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed continue to operate and raise funds inside Pakistani territory. Just a few days ago, a U.S. State Department report had exposed Pakistani's various inaction against various terrorist organizations. And now a Saudi Asia news outlet has reported that Pakistan continues being duplicitous on the use of terrorist groups as proxies in its geopolitical pursuits, a report. Pakistan sponsors terrorism and it has been exposed by various international organizations and think tanks. This time Singapore Post has unmasked Islamabad. The Southeast Asia's news outlet made the claim based on US country reports on terror 2020 and said that multiple terrorist groups continue to operate from Pakistani soil. The report highlighted that Pakistan didn't take action against other known terrorists such as JM founder and UN designated terrorist Masood Azhar and 2008 Mumbai attack project manager Sajid Meer, both of whom are believed to remain free in Pakistan. The report cited several examples, including that of Masood Azhar writing a column, Manzil Kitaraf, congratulating the Afghan Taliban for its Kabul takeover. Another incident was that of the release of Umar Sheikh, who has been accused of murdering Daniel Pearl in the year 2002. आतंक नाम लो सबसे पहला मुल्क जो आता है वो पाकिस्तान आता है अफगानिस्तान हो भारत हो अमेरिका हो इंग्लैंड हो कहीं भी आतंक मचता है तो जब उसकी जड़ों में जाते हैं तो हमें एक ही देश नजर आता है पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तान की आर्मी आतंक को एज ए इंडस्ट्री चलाती है Pakistan has never been sincere whenever it assured the global community that it would perform its counter-terrorism obligations. Islamabad's duplicity has been on display since the 9-11 attacks. To escape the international scrutiny of its terrorist ecosystem, Islamabad has only engaged in a cosmetic crackdown on this network. This network, including terrorist groups and madrasas, are often temporarily shut relocated to other places or asked to keep a low profile, which give a false sense to the global community of a crackdown and a decline in their activities. These madrasas are gearing up to scale their activities, demanding the implementation of Sharia in Pakistan. Moreover, politicians in the country are encouraging the radical elements of society to do whatever they want. We should not forget what the Defence Minister of Pakistan had said after the CR court lynching. So, these are the children of the children, the fights, 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 the fights. Extremism has become a part of Pakistan military establishment. The South Asian country is inching towards Talibanization. Recently, a slain Hezbollah terrorist's widow exposed the dark reality of how Pakistan misused religion to lure the youth. She explained that Pak back terrorists influence people to join their cause in the name of Islam, but that it is not jihad, and that she wants youngsters to know this. She urges them not to get involved with terrorists or become mujahid for any cause. People who join terrorist organizations after being influenced by such radical ideals suffer greatly physically and emotionally. Pakistan is not all the names. There is no human being. 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 I will say that there is no human being. There is no human being. There is no human being. 
اپنے اسلام کا مطلب غلط استعمال کر کے تو ان کا بھی غلط استعمال کرتے ہیں نوجوان سارے زندگیاں ان کی برباد کر دیتے ہیں کچھ تو جوان ہی چاہتے ہیں بچارے جوانی بھری جوانی میں کچھ شادی کر کے خود کو بھی برباد کرتے ہیں اور بچوں کو بھی ورلڈ پاور شوڈ ریویو ٹائز وتھ پاکستان ان لائٹ آف اسلام آباد سپورٹ ٹو ٹیرسٹ گروپس دیر از اے نیڈ ٹو ڈلیور اے کلیئر پبلک میسج ٹو اسلام آباد دا یو ایس اینڈ ادر کنٹریز شوڈ ٹیک اسٹیپس ٹو لمٹ پاکستانس ایکسیز ٹو گلوبل فائنینشیل مارکیٹس انٹل پاکستان ڈیمانسٹریٹس دیٹ اٹ از میننگ فلی ایڈریسنگ دا فنڈ ریزنگ اینڈ آپریشنس آف ٹیرسٹ گروپس Moving on to Afghanistan, where the Taliban so far has failed to live up to its promises of offering a more moderate and inclusive style of leadership. The rights and liberties of women are being snatched away. The group has not fulfilled the commitments regarding the education of girls and other rights for women. Afghan women feel afraid of the future and they are staging protests and demanding the voices to be heard, a report. Taliban dictate women to not enter in a vehicle without a man. What about the widows? Where can they find a man? There are several such questions emerging among the women in Afghanistan as they face strict restrictions by the Taliban. Afghan women recently took to the streets demanding equal rights after the Taliban imposed restrictions for the women. A crowd of women marched to the Afghan capital carrying banners and chanting slogans demanding equal rights. Around 30 women gathered near a mosque in Kabul and chanted slogans, Why have you closed schools? And we want work, food and education. Taliban even restricted women to wear a hijab to cover their head and faces. همان قسمی که وزارت زنان را ما از دست دادیم و صدای ما را جامعه جهانی نشنید با ما هم صدا نشد A few days back the Taliban also put a ban on the broadcast of soap operas and movies featuring women It even made it mandatory for female journalists to wear hijab Afghan women say that the Taliban wants to eliminate them just like it abolished the Ministry of Women Their fear is justified as recently Afghanistan's education minister Abdul Baki Haqqani said that the Taliban regime is not against women education but opposes men and women studying together. The minister called for the end of co-education saying that it goes against Islamic values. Taliban have yet again failed to give basic rights to the women in Afghanistan. There is a major disconnect between what they earlier said and what they're doing on the ground. Afghan women now find themselves in the untenable position of looking for help from the international community. In the last 20 years, women and girls in Afghanistan have enjoyed a measure of freedom and are demanding more of it. Standing beside Afghan women in their struggle and finding tools to pressure the Taliban and the political will to do so is the least, the very least, the international community could do. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Skyrim Zemek signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.